Shakespeare feels so modern to readers largely because of his multiple and varying presentations of sexuality. My students are always startled by some of Shakespeare's characters' blatant references to sexuality in his plays. For example, Romeo and Juliet explores teenage sexuality, a topic that's usually approached with caution, yet the teenage couple are overtly sexual. Juliet has a soliloquy all about the coming of night and her anticipation of consummating her marriage with Romeo. Spread thy close curtain love performing night, the runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap in these arms, untalked of and unseen. Her eagerness is palpable as she waits for Romeo to arrive. Othello deals with interracial sexuality and the challenges an interracial couple might face. Iago, the villain in the play, tries to make the act of consummation sound deviant when he reports that Othello is an old black ram tupping his white ewe, and Othello and Desdemona are making the beast with two backs. Unfortunately, Othello's otherness renders him susceptible to these misplaced images. Also in Othello, there are hints of homoeroticism in Iago's dealings with Othello and Cassio. Sexuality is presented in a darker light in King Lear. Feminine sexuality is often portrayed in this play as dark and suspicious. Edgar even refers to the female anatomy as the dark and vicious place where his half-brother, the malicious Edmund, was conceived. Female sexuality is mysterious and threatening in Lear. Lastly, there's an ambiguous hint of bestiality in A Midsummer Night's Dream. While Bottom is an ass, he spends a night with Titania, the queen of the fairies. She tells Bottom, oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee, after their night together, and the readers or theater goers are left with some unsettling images. Sexuality in Shakespeare's time was just as complicated and varied as it is today, and that contributes to his lasting appeal. To more deeply explore the world and works of Shakespeare, watch Shakespeare Uncovered starting January 30th at 8 p.m. and the following two Fridays on KCOS.